Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Raj Srinambudripad. I'm board certified in internal medicine, and I've also done additional training in gastroenterology. And today's video is all about the exciting topic of leaky gut. Leaky gut has been a huge buzzword lately, and so some of you may be wondering, what is leaky gut and could I have it? While I was a GI fellow at UC Irvine, I did hundreds of endoscopies and colonoscopies, but I never saw leaky gut. And that's because you can't see leaky gut during these procedures. The definition of leaky gut is abnormal intestinal permeability. What's fascinating is that leaky gut is not just a gut issue. It can affect all aspects of your health. Hippocrates once said, all disease begins in the gut. So if you're suffering from leaky gut, it can affect your hormones, your immune system, your skin, and even your brain and your mood. To better understand some of the far-reaching consequences of leaky gut, let me introduce you to some of my patients. So Sarah is a 35-year-old woman suffering from migraines and chronic fatigue. Crystal is a 40-year-old woman with Hashimoto's thyroid disease who's suffering from a lot of joint pain and brain fog. Nicole is a 45-year-old woman suffering from acne and severe eczema. Poor Andrew is a 28-year-old man with so many food sensitivities, he just doesn't know what to eat anymore. Susan is a 30-year-old woman who's not pregnant, she's just bloated and has severe IBS. Finally, we have John, who's a 50-year-old man with frequent sinus infections and congestion from nasal allergies. So I know these patients sound completely different, but they do have one thing in common. And yes, you guessed it, it's leaky gut. The lining of our GI tract called the epithelium is only one cell layer thick, and it's made out of cells called enterocytes. It was designed this way so we can easily absorb nutrients from our food. In a healthy gut, the enterocytes are bound together by tight junctions, and this creates a protective barrier. In leaky gut, inflammation causes disruption of the tight junctions between the enterocytes. This results in disruption of the protective barrier, and this is a big deal because now, food particles, viruses, bacteria, and other toxins can leak into your bloodstream. So let me give you an analogy. So here we have a net that won't let this ball pass through because the holes in the net are smaller than the ball. So the net is like your gut epithelium, which is protecting your body from a toxin, which is the ball. So leaky gut is like taking a scissors and cutting holes that are bigger in the net. So the scissors could be something like antibiotics, an infection with a bad bacteria, parasite, or yeast, or a reaction to an inflammatory food such as gluten or dairy in a sensitive or allergic individual. Now that there's a big hole in the net, the ball can easily pass through. So this is like a toxin that's passing through your gut epithelial barrier, entering your bloodstream. So the ball, which is representing a toxin, got through the leaky gut and has entered your bloodstream. So now what happens? So it causes an inflammatory immune cascade. So normally the lining of your gut is your first line of defense and critical for your immune system. So when food particles and toxins randomly enter your bloodstream, it can cause confusion in your immune system, leading to autoimmune disease. It can trigger conditions like Hashimoto's thyroid disease, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, Crohn's disease, alopecia, and psoriasis. The inflammation can also cause brain fog and memory issues. As your immune system gets confused, you can develop new allergies and food intolerances. Patients with leaky gut often report joint pain within just a few minutes of eating a certain food. The inflammation can also trigger frequent migraine headaches. Leaky gut can also present as outward inflammation on the skin and will see conditions like acne, rosacea, and eczema become severe. Finally, this inflammatory cascade can cause a myriad of GI symptoms which are often labeled as IBS, such as abdominal pain, gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, inconsistent bowel habits, and heartburn. 
So what causes leaky gut? The standard American diet, also known as the SAD diet, is a big cause of leaky gut because it has a lot of inflammatory triggers like sugar, high fructose corn syrup, artificial sweeteners, hydrogenated trans fat, and chemicals and preservatives. Stress definitely affects the way you digest food and the increase in cortisol, the bad stress hormone, can lead to inflammation in the gut leading to leaky gut. Antibiotics can be disruptive to the gut microbiome, which is your ecosystem of trillions of bacteria in your gut. When the balance between the good and bad bacteria is thrown off, this can lead to inflammation and leaky gut. Long-term use of acid-blocking medications such as omeprazole, which is a proton pump inhibitor, can affect the way you digest food, especially proteins, and this can lead to changes in your microbiome that cause leaky gut. Synthetic hormones such as birth control pills, when used year after year without a break, can also affect your microbiome, leading to inflammation and leaky gut. Having an infection in your gut, such as H. pylori in your stomach, or a parasite like blastocystis, or a yeast infection like candida, or a virus from traveler's diarrhea, or another bad bacteria from food poisoning, any of these could cause inflammation and leaky gut. Small intestine bacterial overgrowth, also known as SIBO, is another big cause of leaky gut because bacteria are populating the small intestine where they're not supposed to be, and this can lead to inflammation and disruption in the gut epithelium. So now you're probably wondering, how do we diagnose leaky gut? Well, I've already mentioned that you can't see leaky gut during an endoscopy or colonoscopy. So the best way to diagnose it is through a comprehensive poop test. I like to use the GIFX Comprehensive Stool Profile by Genova Diagnostics. Genova is a CLIA certified lab and I find their results to be very accurate and it tells us everything about your microbiome. It's like a 10 page report. In leaky gut, there's disruption in the tight junctions between the enterocytes, and this causes an elevation in a protein called zonulin, which we can measure in the stool on the microbiome test. What I love about the microbiome test is it gives me a complete picture on your gut health. It tells me if there's an infection like H. pylori, a parasite, candida, or other yeast. How healthy is your bacterial profile? Is there dysbiosis or overgrowth of a particular bacteria? How are you digesting fats and proteins in your diet? And is your pancreas doing a good job of producing enzymes? How are you doing with fiber in your diet? This is indicated by the short chain fatty acids, which are the postbiotics. Is your microbiome producing a healthy level of butyrate, which is one of the most important postbiotics that helps reduce inflammation, promote healthy motility, and improve the health of your colon cells. It's also thought to help reduce the risk of colon cancer. Do you have an elevated beta-glucuronidase in your gut? Because this can cause recycling of toxins and estrogens from your gut. This is how your gut can actually impact your hormones. Finally, we can objectively measure the inflammation in your gut using markers like fecal secretory IgA and calprotectin. There's so many intricacies to the gut microbiome. And if we diagnose you with leaky gut, the good news is it's a treatable condition. The first step in healing leaky gut is to clean up your diet. This means eating whole foods that are preferably organic. And if a food is labeled USDA organic, it means that it's also non-GMO. Things to avoid include refined sugar, artificial sweeteners, as well as high fructose corn syrup. Eliminate all processed foods from your diet since they have chemicals and preservatives. Avoid vegetable oils such as corn, canola, and soybean oil because these are all considered inflammatory oils and soybean oil is typically genetically modified. In order to avoid trans fat, you want to avoid any product with hydrogenated vegetable oils or deep fried foods in restaurants. Many people are allergic or sensitive to gluten or dairy, which are considered inflammatory triggers for the gut. So we recommend avoiding these while healing leaky gut. 
Finally, alcohol should be avoided because it can cause inflammation in the gut and feeds the bad bacteria in your microbiome. Knowing your food allergies is extremely helpful when healing the gut. The most accurate test for medical food allergies is the IgE Food Allergy Panel. It tells us what allergies you have as well as the severity. The most common allergies we see are wheat, which is all gluten products, dairy, which is like cheese, butter, and yogurt, peanuts, soybean, as well as eggs. The next step in healing leaky gut is repairing the enterocytes, and we do this with an amino acid called L-glutamine. L-glutamine can be purchased as a powder and you add it to water and drink it in the morning on an empty stomach. Bone broth is another rich source of glutamine, so you can incorporate this in your diet as well. However, just be aware bone broth is really high in histamines, so if you're sensitive to histamines and get headaches from histamines, you probably want to just stick with the L-glutamine supplement. So L-glutamine is the amino acid food that helps to heal the enterocytes and seal up the tight junctions. This helps restore our gut epithelial lining, which is our protective barrier. Step three is improving the health of our microbiome, which is our bacterial ecosystem of trillions of bacteria. This is where a probiotic supplement can be helpful. Yogurt is another great way to get probiotics, but just in case you have a dairy sensitivity, there are dairy-free alternatives now made from coconut milk, almond milk, or cashew milk. You just want to make sure they have no added sugars. Fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, and kombucha are other great ways to get probiotics through your diet. A common question I get is which probiotic should I take? There's so many to choose from these days. The gut microbiome test allows me to give you more personalized advice based on your results. Most good probiotics will have five or more strains of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, which are the good bacteria. Saccharomyces boulardii is a good probiotic yeast that helps push out other bad yeast from the body. So if we find candida on the microbiome test, or if the patient has symptoms of yeast growth in their body, we like to use Saccharomyces boulardii. Finally, spore-based bacillus probiotics have been really helpful in treating patients who have small intestine bacterial overgrowth, or SIBO. So probiotics also come in a variety of strengths. So 20 billion colony forming units is a good maintenance dose probiotic. 100 billion CFU is good for healing microbiome imbalances. Finally, a high dose probiotic like a 225 billion CFU can be incredibly effective at rebooting your microbiome. The best time to take a probiotic is first thing in the morning on an empty stomach so that the good bacteria can colonize your microbiome. Here's some fermented foods that are rich in probiotics like kombucha, sauerkraut, and kimchi. But be aware that fermented foods from soy like miso or tempeh may not be good if you have a thyroid condition or Hashimoto's thyroid disease. Soy is also a common allergy or sensitivity that we see. For yogurt and kefir, I recommend the dairy-free varieties because a lot of people have allergies or sensitivities to dairy and they react to the dairy proteins which are casein or whey. Finally, it's good to be aware that fermented foods are high in histamines and some patients are sensitive to histamines and get symptoms like headaches, rashes, and allergy symptoms. So if you're sensitive to histamines, it's better to get your probiotics from a supplement rather than fermented foods. Step number four is to have healthy postbiotics. Foods in your diet that are rich sources of fiber are also great sources of prebiotics. And when the bacteria in your gut metabolize the prebiotics, they turn it into postbiotics. You want to have a robust amount of short-chain fatty acids and butyrate to help heal leaky gut. If your short-chain fatty acid score is low on your microbiome test, we can improve this by giving you prebiotic supplements, increasing the fiber in your diet, and we can also supplement with butyrate. 
Step number five is to help your body digest food better. It's important to practice slow, mindful eating and to chew your food slowly. Taking a digestive enzyme before your meals can help you break down the food better, and the better you digest your food, the less likely it'll trigger inflammation and leaky gut. Finally, learning to manage stress is really important, especially while you're eating or digesting your food. I want to emphasize that digestive enzymes are amazing. I've seen numerous patients with IBS, bloating, or other digestive problems resolved with digestive enzymes. You want to use a combination digestive enzyme that can target the breakdown of carbohydrates, proteins, as well as fats. Remember, the better you digest your food, the less likely it's going to trigger inflammation and leaky gut. Now let me give you a case example. So here's my patient, Crystal. She's a 42-year-old woman who's a violinist, but unfortunately she was suffering from joint pains which was affecting her profession. Crystal was having to take ibuprofen several times a day to manage her joint pains. But unfortunately, what I found is it was actually causing her to have leaky gut. And the leaky gut was triggering inflammation, which was actually making her joint pains worse. In order to break this vicious cycle, I had Crystal stop using ibuprofen. And instead, I prescribed her a topical ketoprofen gel which is similar to ibuprofen, but because it's topical, it has no impact on the gut. She could also use acetaminophen as needed for pain. I had her use L-glutamine powder with water every morning on an empty stomach, and I cleaned up her diet, eliminating sugar, alcohol, gluten, and dairy. I also had her take a probiotic supplement every morning along with the glutamine. Crystal followed this protocol for three months, and I imagine it healed her leaky gut and reduced her inflammation because when I saw her three months later, she reported all her joint pain was gone, which is amazing. So the main takeaway is that a healthy gut leads to a healthy body. I've seen so many patients whose migraines have gone away, joint pain has gone away, eczema has cleared, their IBS symptoms and bloating have gone away, their food sensitivities vanished, they had less allergies, less infections, and even better mood by healing their leaky gut. Now SIBO, or small intestine bacterial overgrowth, is another story. If you're suffering from bloating or IBS symptoms, definitely check out my video on SIBO. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to hear from you, so please leave your questions and comments below. Thank you again, and I wish you all great health.